Hello, I hope you're doing great. In this lesson, we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental of all programming concepts, variables. Now, this is a really exciting topic because once you have a, a handle on how variables work, you basically have one of the big keys to start understanding how programming in general works. Specifically, in this lesson, we'll be talking about memory and variables, declaring a variable, some naming conventions for variables, and initializing a variable. So what is a variable? So variables are a programming tool that help us store and recall information in our programs. So a microcontroller, like the one the Arduino uses, and computers in general, they have a thing called memory. And memory, well, it's really handy. Memory allows us to store information for use at a later time. So let's say I'm working on a project, and this project is going to monitor temperature during the day. And I have a temperature sensor. It reads the current temperature every 60 minutes, 1 in the morning till midnight. And I want the program to record the highest temperature and then display it at the end of the day on like an LCD screen. So in order for the program to accomplish this, it needs to store two key pieces of information. It needs to store the value of the current temperature, and it also needs to store the value of the highest temperature that it's encountered thus far. But how do we actually save this information in a sketch, and then how do we recall it when we need to remember it? In order to do this, we need to use the memory. For now, think of memory as a big wall of lockers, and you can use the lockers to store something. So when you need that something again, you just go back to the locker and you grab it. But how do you remember what locker you put it in? So in order for us to do that, all we're going to do is give the locker a name. And the name of the locker, the place where you actually put stuff to store it, is called a variable. Now technically speaking, a variable is the named address of a specific location in memory. But I don't want to get caught up in all the technical stuff. I want to dive in to the practical use of variables. So let's go back to this temperature project and we'll try to make this clear. So again, what we want to do is record the highest temperature during a 24 hour period. So for our program, I'm going to need to store those two key pieces of information, the current temperature and the highest temperature. So I'm going to have to name two lockers. One locker I'll call current temperature and another locker I'll name it highest temperature. So let's say my Arduino, the first reading of the day, maybe the temperature is like 50 degrees. So I'm going to take the number 50, I'm going to open up the current temperature locker and I'm going to put in the number 50. Now at the same time I'm also going to want to open up the highest temperature locker. Now right now there's nothing in it. So 50 is larger than nothing, so I'll go ahead and put the number 50 in the highest temperature locker also. So now both of our lockers have the number 50 in them. Now 60 minutes later, I read the temperature again, and let's say it's raised 2 degrees, and now it's 52 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So I open up my current temperature locker, and I put in 52. So 52 overwrites the number 50. And so now the current temperature locker has the number 52 in it. I also peek inside the highest temperature locker and I see that 52 is hotter than 50, I go ahead and replace that also. And I'm just going to repeat that process every hour. So I open up the locker, the current temperature locker, I replace the old value with the new value, and then I check to see if I need to replace the temperature in the highest temp locker. So this reveals the first really important thing about variables, and the most powerful thing about variables, and that's that the contents of a variable change. Now, the name of the variable, that stays the same. Because the variable is the container for the information. We don't want to confuse it with the actual information itself. The variable is the locker, it's not the actual stuff that's in the locker. So let's recap what we just learned. We need to store information, and we use memory to store it. We can think of memory like a wall of lockers. To use one of these lockers, we have to name it and the name of the locker is called a variable. Once we have it named, we can put stuff in it and we can refer back to that stuff at a later time, whenever we need it again. And again, the name refers to the location of the locker, not the actual content of the locker. Now, there is another thing we have to do when we make a variable. We also have to say what type of thing we are going to put in it. So a good analogy here is to imagine that you have to build a zoo. Now, what you're going to have to do is figure out where each animal is going to go on your zoo. 
And you have to make sure that each animal is given enough space so it can do its thing. For example, you're going to need a bigger cage for a tiger than you will for like an African frog display. And if you're going to have an aquatic display, you're going to need a bigger tank for a shark than you would for a goldfish. So where am I going with this zoo analogy? Well, here's the deal. You can't take a monkey and put him in a cage designed for fish. Likewise, you can't take a fish and put it in a cage designed for a tiger. It's just not going to work. Now, variables are kind of like this because a variable has to have a data type specified for the variable. So if I have a variable and I say this variable can only hold whole numbers, then all day long I can put whole numbers in that variable. But if I try to put a number like a fraction into that variable, I'm going to get an error. And that's because I specified the data type for that variable to be holding whole numbers. I can't put a fraction into a variable that I've specified to be a whole number variable. Now, creating a variable is called declaring it. So to declare a variable, you need two things, a name and a data type. The data type comes first, followed by its name. So one example of a common data type is an integer. An integer is a data type that can store a whole number from negative 32,768 to 32,766. So a whole number is like 1 or 5 or 18. It doesn't have a decimal point after it, like 1.0567. Now, to specify a variable is an integer data type, we use the abbreviation INT. Now, the Arduino IDE knows all of the data types, and it conveniently changes the color of the text when you type INT. Following the data type, we need to type the name. So we have to have a space between the data type and the name. And we can pretty much name a variable whatever we want, but there are some basic rules. So a variable name cannot have any spaces in it. It can't have any special characters like pound sign, dollar sign, or percent. And you can use numbers in a variable name, but you can't start the variable name with a number. Also, you can't use a keyword as the name of a variable. Now, keywords are special words that you're going to learn about later in the course, but they're words that the Arduino IDE restricts for certain uses. And just like data types, the Arduino IDE will change the color of the text when you type a keyword. You don't have to know all the keywords because if you type it, it'll change color and you'll realize, hey, I can't use that for a variable name. But what are we supposed to actually name variables? The truth is you can name them whatever you want, but there are some good conventions to use when naming. Nothing's really agreed upon, but the bottom line is your variable names should be descriptive of what they're gonna hold. For example, if we wanted to save the current temperature in a variable called mom, we could but it really just wouldn't make that much sense. It'd be more logical to name that variable current temperature. That way, if somebody else reads our sketch, they might have a basic idea of what the value is that actually goes into that variable. Now, notice also how I write the word current temperature. I capitalize the T in temperature, the second word, and this is called camel case. It's simply a way to help distinguish the words in a variable name. You could also type current temperature with an underscore between the two words. Now, how you write the name of the variable, it's all up to you, but it's called the naming convention, and it's meant to keep things standardized so that you can read the code that you've written and help other people read the code that you've written. So throughout the course, you'll see me use a mix of camel case and underscoring, depending on the context of the variable I create. But again, you're free to use whatever name you want as long as you follow those rules that we talked about before. So again, when we are declaring a variable, we need the data type followed by the name. And then at the end of that statement, we want a semicolon. So once we've declared a variable, we're going to want to put something inside it. To put a value inside a variable, we use what is called the assignment operator, which is just an equal sign. Now, the first time we assign a value to a variable, it's called initializing the variable. Now, we can declare and initialize a variable on the same line of code. For example, here, we've got int, that's the data type, current temperature, that's the name of the variable. We've got the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. And then we have the value that we are initializing that variable to, which is the number 40. And then again, we finish that statement with a semicolon. 
Later in the program, if we want to change that value, all we have to use is the assignment operator again. So we would name the variable current temperature, and then we would assign it using the assignment operator, the equal sign, to a new value. And then we end it with a semicolon. All right, so let's recap what we've talked about so far. I know it, it's all kind of abstract, but it will become more concrete as we move forward in the course. So a variable is simply the name of a memory location. It's how we're able to store and recall information in our sketch. In order to use a variable, we have to give it a name. We also need to give it a data type. The data type determines what we can put in a variable. When we want to assign a value to a variable, we use the assignment operator. The first time we put a value in a variable, it's called initializing that variable. Throughout the program, if we want to change the value of a variable, we just have to name the variable, use the assignment operator, which is just an equal sign, and then set it equal to that new value. All right, that's it for this lesson. We're going to dive more into data types and all stuff like that in the next videos. All right, see you then. Bye.